Hey guys, Scott from Fright Props here, and today we're going to be taking a look at our HD Triggerable video player. We have the box here, we're going to open it up and see what all comes with the unit when you order it. So let's take a peek inside. The first thing you'll see is the manual. The manual contains a bunch of helpful information about setting up the player, uh, how to change settings in the player, and how to connect the player to various devices. This box will contain the power supply. I'm going to set this aside. Uh, here we have the player itself. We'll take a closer look at that in a moment. The player comes with two buttons. You can buy more additional buttons uh, if you like. It also comes with a remote to change all the different settings on the player remotely. As well as an HDMI cable. Uh, for connecting to your uh, TV or monitor. On the front of the player you can see a USB interface slot, the SD card slot, and then six button connector terminals, K1 through K6. So you can connect up to six buttons to this player to activate different videos. On the back of the player you'll see a VGA out, uh, optical audio out, coaxial video out, uh, 8th inch stereo audio out and your HDMI out as well as the on and off button and your power in. We recommend using this player with SD cards. Uh, we recommend a maximum SD card size of 4 gigabytes and in order to get the videos to play on the player properly you'll have to set this SD card up using a PC. We recommend a PC and not a Mac. So let's go over to the PC and get this SD card set up and then we'll come back to the player and get it all hooked up and ready to go. Okay, in this portion of the video we're going to cover how to set up your SD card for use with the HD Triggerable video player. Uh, so the first thing you're going to need to do is insert an SD card into your computer. Um, and then we're going to have to create a file structure on that SD card. So on a PC here, we're running Windows 10, uh, and we're going to just click this icon, which will bring up the File Explorer, and we're just going to find our SD card, which is right here. Click on that, and you'll notice that there's nothing here because the SD card is currently empty. Um, to use this player, we need to create a couple of folders on the SD card. Uh, these players have up to six inputs, and for each input, you can create a folder that you can put videos in. Uh, so we're going to create a couple folders here. Um, to do that, we're just going to right-click in the open space, go to New, and then Folder. Uh, the folders are named uh, by numbers to correspond with the inputs. So we're going to create a folder here and name it 01. And then we'll create another folder named 02. And you can go on uh, creating folders this way all the way up to the maximum of six folders uh, for the six different inputs of the video player. Now that we have these two folders, we can go ahead and put some videos on the folders. We have to our left here the test videos that we supply on our website for testing players. Um, they're just downloaded from a website of free HD video clips. They're a close-up of an eyeball opening and closing, which is kind of creepy, so it's a good test for a Halloween video player. Um, if you want a video to play automatically on a loop, uh, sort of an ambient video, you can just put it in the root of your SD card. So let's say we want our first video just to play whenever the uh, video player is plugged in. We can just drop it right in the root of the SD card. You can see it uh, right here. Uh, one thing to note is that um, the video player will have trouble with long file names. So make sure that your file name, see here this is one is called test1.mp4. Make sure that's not something really long, like over 10 characters or so. It's best to just give them nice short names, or else the player can get confused. So, uh, in this current setup, the test1.mp4 will play uh, whenever the player starts up. If we wanted the test2 video to play when we pressed the bu corresponding button for input 1, we just go ahead and drop it into our 01 folder. And if we had a, another video that we wanted to play when we press the uh, second button, let's say we wanted to play test 1 again for some reason, we can just drop that into the 02 folder, and so on for all the folders you've created. The next thing we're going to have to do is create a text file so that the video player knows what to do with the folders that we've created when the buttons are pressed. To do that, we're going to use Notepad, which is a free application that comes with any Windows PC. 
uh, we'll just click to open notepad here. Let me minimize this guy here. The text document you create really only needs to have a couple things in it. We really just need to tell the player what to do when the different buttons are pressed. In this case, we only had two folders, so we just need to tell it to play the video in folder one when button one is pressed and to play the video in folder two when button two is pressed. So to do that, we just enter 01 for folder 01 equals, and now we tell it what to do, play 01 forward slash. And that's it. And then for the second folder, we just go 02 equals 02 forward slash. And all that's doing is it's telling the player uh, what we want it to do when these different buttons are pressed. So when button 1 is pressed, play anything you find in folder 1. When button 2 is pressed, uh, play anything you find in folder 2. And you would go so on just like this if you wanted to have, you know, your third button do something and so on. But we don't have those, so we don't need to put those. There are other functions that you can type in here to control the video players, different features, but we really don't need to do any of that right now. Uh, so we're just going to go File and save this as, and you'll want to name this autoplay.txt. So the .txt is still there. So autoplay.txt and save. And it'll pop up right here on our desktop. And then we can go ahead and close that. Now we can go back to our SD card and we'll go ahead and put the autoplay.txt onto the SD card and we're all set. That is pretty much the entire setup for the SD card portion. Uh, the last thing you want to do is go to where you see the SD card uh, in your list of drives on your uh, file explorer here and right click and you want to make sure you eject the media. Uh, if you don't do that, sometimes if you just pull it out raw without hitting eject, you can corrupt the information that's on the SD card. So we'll just hit eject, it'll pop up and tell us it's safe to remove, and we're all good to go. We'll pop it in the player and go to the next step. Okay, now that we have our SD card all set up from the computer with the files that we want to play on it and everything properly set up on the card, we can go ahead and get the player ready to go. We're going to use the power supply here, plug this in off screen, and then Connect it to the power in. I'm going to connect one of the included buttons into the K1. For this demonstration, we'll just be using one of the inputs, but you can, of course, use all six if you want. We'll connect our HDMI cable to our monitor off screen and then into the player on the back. and we should be all good to go. We'll power up the player by flipping the switch and it should go through its boot up process and we will go from there. Once the player boots up, if there's no SD card inserted, it will go to this uh, rest screen you see here. Once we insert our SD card, it will start playing the videos that we stored on the card. So we'll go ahead and put this into the SD card slot and click it into place. You'll see that our video screen will start to play the ambient video that we put in the root of the SD card directory. If we want to trigger a video, all we have to do is press the button that's plugged into the corresponding input for the folders we created on the SD card earlier. So we press the button and our video should play. You'll notice there's a brief black screen that appears when a video restarts, if it's looping, or when a new video is triggered. That's part of the way these players work and you can't change anything to get rid of that. It's just the nature of this type of video player. If you are interested in a seamless video transition for something like a changing portrait, check out our premium video players, also available on the site. So being able to play a video at the press of a button is pretty cool, but where this thing really gets cool is when it's used in conjunction with our controllers. I'm going to take a second and wire this video player up to a peekaboo controller and walk you through how that works, and then we'll show uh, how things can really get cool quick. Here we have one of our Peekaboo Junior controllers. This is a two output controller with no audio capabilities. What we want to be able to do is use one of the outputs to start our video and use the second output to control another electronic device. In this case, I've wired up a small LED spotlight. In order to connect the video player to the Peekaboo, we're going to need to take this button that's wired into the trigger and wire it into the Peekaboo. 
As you can see, the button has two wires coming from it that go in to the input of the video player. In order to get the peekaboo to trigger this button, we'll have to cut the button off. We can do that using our wire snips here. Leaving us with two wires. We can discard this button now. Once you've cut the button off, you can just strip a little bit off the ends of each wire. And we'll go ahead and wire these into the Peekaboo Junior. In order to do this, we need to take the two wires and plug them in to relay output, in this case number one, because we're going to use our first output to control the video. You'll see that there are three terminals for each relay output, NC for normally closed, C for common, and NO for normally open. We want to use C and NO. Essentially that means that this relay is normally open and when we trigger the relay using the controller, it's going to close the relay contacting these two wires together, just like if we had pushed the button that was initially attached. So we'll go ahead and loosen the terminals here on C and NO. We can insert the wires. It doesn't matter which wire goes to which output, just as long as one is in C and one is in NO. And then we can go ahead and tighten these back down. You'll notice that we've already pre-wired our light to the second relay output. And we should be ready to go. Once we plug in the peekaboo, it'll be ready to program. If you're new to Peekaboo's, they're programmed in real time using buttons on the front of the controller. All we need to do is press the record button and then control our outputs in real time and press the record button again to save our program. In this case, you'll notice that since we put a video in the root of the folder, we have an ambient video that's just looping as we sit here. Now, we can hit record and press the button 1 to trigger our video in folder 1 and it will start to play. And once it's finished playing, it will go back to the looping video. So let's say that we want to start our video and then have some type of an effect that accompanies the video. It doesn't have to be a light. It could be a cylinder, it could be a water sprayer or an air blaster, any type of effect that you want to use in conjunction with your video. So to do that, all we do is hit record, press the uh, button 1 to trigger the video in folder 1, and then program our second output along with the video. Whatever we think looks good. Once everything's done, hit record again to save that program. Now anytime that this peekaboo is triggered by a motion sensor, a step mat, a hand trigger, or by just pressing play, it will go ahead and play back our sequence, including starting the video and then triggering our light. You can trigger our video player using any number of controllers. It doesn't have to be a Peekaboo Junior. So you can have many more outputs of different effects that accompany your video. You can also use the different outputs to trigger different videos just by wiring the buttons cut off like we did here into the different outputs of the controller. We could also attach a controller with more outputs so that we could have a video play and then a water burst, an air spray, some lights go on, any number of different effects that we wanted to create. So that's a quick overview of our HD triggerable video player. I'll put a few links in the description of this video to different support documents with frequently asked questions and uh, different tips to get your video player working. If you have any uh, questions, of course, you can always leave them as a comment on this video or email them to us at sales at All right, thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.